Good morning, second grade Neville Knights. Thank you for tuning in to my YouTube video for Thursday, April 16th. By now, you should be in the habit of watching my YouTube video right away every morning. And I appreciate you being here today. Remember to keep your distance learning materials in a same, safe place because we will be using them every day. Today we will finish Dinosaurs Before Dark. When we left off, we had just finished Chapter 6. And remember, from far away, Jack could see a Tyrannosaurus Rex coming. Chapter 7 is called Ready, Set, Go. Run, Annie, run, cried Jack, to the treehouse. They dashed down the hill together, through the tall grass, through the ferns, past the pteranodon, and right to the rope ladder. They scrambled up. Seconds later, they tumbled into the treehouse. Annie leaped to the window. He's going away, she said, panting. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He looked through the window with her. Oh, think how scary that would be. The Tyrannosaurus was wandering off, but then the monster stopped and turned around. Duck! said Jack. The two of them hunched down. After a long moment, they raised their heads. They peeked out again. Coast clear, said Jack. Yay, whispered Annie. We have to get out of here, said Jack. You made a wish before, said Annie. I wish we could go back to Frog Creek, said Jack. Nothing happened. I wish. Wait, you were looking at a picture in the dinosaur book, remember? The dinosaur book. Jack groaned. Oh no, I left the book and my pack on the hill. I have to go back. Oh, forget it, said Annie. I can't, said Jack. The book doesn't belong to us. Plus, my notebook's in my pack with all my notes. Hurry, said Annie. Jack hurried down the rope ladder. He leaped to the ground. He raced past the pteranodon through the ferns, through the tall grass, and up the hill. He looked down. There was his pack, lying on the ground. On top of it was the dinosaur book. But now the valley below was filled with anatosauruses, all standing guard around the nests. Where had they been? Did fear of the Tyrannosaurus send them home? Jack took a deep breath. Ready, set, go! He charged down the hill. He leaped to his backpack. He scooped it up. He grabbed the dinosaur book. A terrible tuba sound. Another, another. All the anatosauruses were bellowing at him. Jack took off. He raced up to the hilltop. He started down the hill. He stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was back, and he was standing between Jack and the treehouse. <clears throat> Chapter 8 is called A Giant Shadow. Jack jumped behind the magnolia tree. His heart was beating so fast he could hardly think. He peeked out at the giant monster. The horrible looking creature was opening and closing his huge jaws. His teeth were as big as steak knives. Don't panic. Think. Jack peered down at the valley. Good. The duck-billed dinosaurs were sticking close to their nests. <clears throat> Jack looked back at the Tyrannosaurus. Good. The monster still didn't seem to know he was there. Don't panic. Think. Think. Maybe there's information in the book. Jack opened up the dinosaur book. He found Tyrannosaurus Rex. He read. Now remember these dark words are always full of facts. <clears throat> Tyrannosaurus Rex was the largest meat-eating land animal of all time. If it were alive today, it would eat a human in one bite. Great. The book was no help at all. Okay. He couldn't hide on the other side of the hill. The Anatosauruses might stampede. Okay, 
He couldn't run to the treehouse. The Tyrannosaurus might run faster. Okay, maybe he should just wait. Wait for the monster to leave. What do you think he should do? Jack peeked around the tree. The Tyrannosaurus had wandered closer to the hill. Something caught Jack's eye. Annie was coming down the rope ladder. Was she nuts? What was she doing? Jack watched Annie hop off the ladder. She went straight to the Pteranodon. She was talking to him. She was flapping her arms. She pointed at Jack, at the sky, at the treehouse. She was nuts. Go, go back up the tree, Jack whispered. Go. Suddenly Jack heard a roar. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was looking in his direction. Jack hit the ground. The Tyrannosaurus, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was coming toward the hill. Jack felt the ground shaking. Should he run? Crawl back into Dinosaur Valley? Climb the magnolia tree? Just then, a sh giant shadow covered Jack. He looked up. The pteranodon was gliding overhead. The giant creature sailed down toward the top of the hill. He was coming straight for Jack. Chapter 7 is called The Amazing Ride. Can you predict why this chapter is called The Amazing Ride? The Pteranodon coasted down to the ground. He stared at Jack with his bright, alert eyes. What was Jack supposed to do? Climb on? But I'm too heavy, thought Jack. Don't think it. Just do it. Jack looked at the Tyrannosaurus. He was starting up the hill. His giant teeth were flashing in the sunlight. Okay, don't think. Just do it. Jack put his book in his pack. Then he eased down onto the pteranodon's back. Make sure you're following along. He held on tightly. The creature moved forward. He spread out his wings and lifted off the ground. They teetered this way. Then that. Jack nearly fell off. The pteranodon steadied himself then rose into the sky. Jack looked down. The Tyrannosaurus was chomping the air and staring up at him. The Pteranodon glided away. He sailed over the hilltop. He circled over the valley, over all the nests filled with babies, over all the giant duck-billed dinosaurs. Then the Pteranodon soared out over the plain over the Triceratops who was grazing in the high grass. It was amazing. It was a miracle. Jack felt like a bird, as light as a feather. The picture. The wind was rushing through his hair. The air smelled sweet and fresh. He whooped. He laughed. Jack couldn't believe it. He was riding on the back of an ancient flying reptile. The pteranodon sailed over the stream, over the ferns and bushes. Then he carried Jack down to the base of the oak tree. When they came to a stop, Jack slid off the creature's back and landed on the ground. Then the pteranodon took off again and glided into the sky. Bye, Henry, whispered Jack. Are you okay? Annie shouted from the treehouse. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He kept staring up at the pteranodon. Jack, are you okay? Annie called. Jack looked up, looked up at Annie. He smiled. Thanks for saving my life, he said. That was really fun. Climb up, said Annie. Jack tried to stand. His legs were wobbly. He felt a bit dizzy. Hurry, shouted Annie. He's coming. Jack looked around. The Tyrannosaurus was heading straight toward him. Jack bolted to the ladder. He grabbed the sides and started up. Hurry, hurry, screamed Annie. 
Jack scrambled into the treehouse. He's coming toward the tree, Annie cried. Suddenly something slammed against the oak tree. The tree shook like a leaf. Jack and Annie tumbled into the books. Make a wish, cried Annie. We need the book, the one with the picture of Frog Creek, said Jack. Where is it? He pushed some books aside. He had to find the book that was about Pennsylvania. There it was. He grabbed it and tore through it, looking for the photograph of the Frog Creek Woods. He found it. Jack pointed to the picture. I wish we could go home, he shouted. The wind began to moan, softly at first. Hurry, Jack yelled. The wind picked up. It was whistling now. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Jack closed his eyes. He held on tightly to Annie. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Can you guess where they are? Chapter 10, Home Before Dark. A bird began to sing. Jack opened his eyes. He was still pointing at the picture of the Frog Creek Woods. He peeked out into the treehouse window. Outside, he saw the exact same view. We're home, whispered Annie. The woods were lit with a golden late afternoon light. The sun was about to set. No time had passed since they'd left. Jack, Annie, a voice called from the distance. That's mom, said Annie, pointing. Jack saw their mother far away. She was standing in front of their house. She looked very tiny. Annie, Jack, she called. Annie stuck her head out the window and shouted, Coming! Jack felt dazed. He just stared at Annie. What happened to us? He said. We took a trip in a magic treehouse, said Annie simply. But it's the same time as when we left, said Jack. Annie shrugged. And how did it take us so far away, said Jack, and so long ago? You just looked at a book and said you wished you could go there, said Annie, and the magic treehouse took us there. But how, said Jack, and who built this magic treehouse? Who put all those books here? A magic person, I guess, said Annie. A magic person? Oh, look, said Jack, I almost forgot about this. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the gold medallion. Someone lost this back there in dinosaur land. Look, there's a letter M on it. Annie's eyes got round. You think M stands for magic person, she said. I don't know, said Jack. I just know someone went to that place before us. Jack, Annie, came the distant cry again. Annie poked her head out the window. Coming, she shouted. Jack put the gold medallion back in his pocket. He pulled the dinosaur book out of his pack and put it back with all the other books. Then he and Annie took one last look around the treehouse. Goodbye, house, whispered Annie. Jack slung his backpack over his shoulder. He pointed at the ladder. Annie started down. Jack followed. Seconds later, they hopped onto the ground and started walking out of the woods. No one's going to believe our story, said Jack. So let's not tell anyone, said Annie. Dad won't believe it, said Jack. He'll say it was a dream, said Annie. Mom won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say it was pretend, said Annie. My teacher won't believe it, said Jack. She'll say you're nuts, said Annie. We better not tell anyone, said Jack. I already said that, said Annie. Jack sighed. I think I'm starting to not believe it myself, he said. They left the woods and started up the road toward their house. As they walked past all the houses on their street, the trip to dinosaur time did seem more and more like a dream. 
only this world and this time seemed real. Jack reached into his pocket. He clasped the gold medallion. He felt the engraving of the letter M. It made Jack's fingers tingle. Jack laughed. Suddenly he felt very happy. He couldn't explain what had happened today, but he knew for sure that their trip in the magic tree house had been real. Absolutely real. Tomorrow, Jack said softly, we'll go back into the woods. Of course, said Annie. And we'll climb up to the tree house, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. And we'll see what happens next, said Jack. Of course, said Annie. Race you. And they took off together, running for home. And that is the end of the story. Now remember, I told you this is only number one in a whole series of books. So do you think they go back to the treehouse another day? What other adventures do you think they might have? I hope you enjoyed this book, and I hope it got you very interested in reading more of the Magic Treehouse series. In fact, next week, we will read another book together from this series. Now, remember, you need to check your matrix. So we find Thursday, and here's reading. Watch my video on YouTube to hear the conclusion of Dinosaurs Before Dark. Now, here's what you need to do today for reading. Draw a picture of your favorite part. So think of the whole story, not just what I read today, but think about all 10 chapters. And I want all of you to do this. This is under must do. So I would like all of you to do this today. It says upload to Seesaw and make a recording if you can. So draw, just get any piece of paper, draw a picture of your favorite part, click the plus and snap a picture of your drawing and tell me all about your drawing and anything else you want to tell me about the book. If you want to predict some of the other adventures Jack and Annie will have, I would love to hear that too. So now it's time for math. First, I want to show you the answers to the work you were asked to do yesterday. Number two, your picture graph should look like this. Number three should look like this. For the brain builder, remember you could only draw 10 circles. Daisy and Carnation needed to have the same number of votes, so two and two there. Number five, the picture graph should look like this. And for the right math, now I'm sure um, there's different wording to give the same answer, but if you are going to explain how picture graphs can be more helpful than tally charts, hopefully you said something about how it might be easier to count the pictures than tallies. So they can be more helpful because it's a little bit easier to read the information quickly. So today I want you to find page 541 in your math packet. Get a pencil. We'll do this together. Lesson three is about analyzing picture graphs. So we're learning to practice looking at a picture graph and thinking about the information. So it says use the data in the picture graph. Write the number of votes for each dinner. Write the least favorite. So what should I write for spaghetti? That you said four tacos, four chicken, you can see the pictures, two, and meatloaf, one. Then you have a question, which dinner is the least favorite? I wish you were here to say it with me. I'm sure you know that it is meat loaf. So let's go on to the back. Remember to pause this if I go too fast. You can use a picture graph to answer questions. So, <coughs> excuse me, what pet is the favorite? Remember to read the key. 
Each animal picture equals one vote. I bet you can see the favorite because it has the most pictures and you can trace the word fish. How many votes does each picture show? The key tells you right here, each animal picture is equal to one vote. So that's pretty easy, isn't it? Now I'm looking on my matrix. It says your job for today is to do guided practice numbers one through three on page 542 of your math packet. Tell a family member your answer to the talk math question. So pretty easy today. You only have questions one, two, and three to do. Look at this picture graph right here, favorite summer activity. Now remember, I want you to find a family member and I want you to do the talk math question. How would you count the votes for bike riding if each picture stood for two votes? So you have this to do for math and for reading, remember to draw your picture of your favorite part from the story and be sure to put that on Seesaw and I will be back tomorrow and tomorrow we are going to read a Scholastic News magazine. Have a great Thursday everyone. Bye.